Hey, hello there. Good morning. Hi, it's Keith from the Keith Speaking Academy. Delighted to see you here. Good morning. Very excited today because we've got the interesting topic today of noise pollution. Well, this will be great. We're going to be looking at different kinds of noise pollution, the language to describe it, to talk about your feelings, pronunciation, the whole everything, the full Monty, as we say. And also, of course, a few model answers of questions that you can ask me at the end of the class. Brilliant. So looking forward to it. I hope you're all well. Um, let's say a few quick hellos to people here. Good morning. Who's coming first today? Motodi was in first. Great. And Supun, Alex, Una, Gloria. Nice to see you. Divas, Vinod, Selen, Puiti, Jacinta, Kylie. Hello with four O's <laughs> to you too. Sandy, Ben Lydia, great. Danush and many, many more. And as well, I can see guys from Facebook coming in very, very quickly. We've got from India, from Nepal. Great. From Germany, Tanja. Welcome. Great. Selen from Hong Kong, all over the world. And I guess one thing that is true for everybody over the world is that we all suffer from noise pollution, right? It's not easy. I mean, for example, right, this morning, <laughs> my day began with lots of noise pollution and it's perfect examples for today's lesson. So today, right, first thing in the morning, very early, some workers were ringing the bells, the doorbells of all the neighbours. That was noisy, waking everybody up um, because they're doing some construction work downstairs. And of course, as soon as they press the doorbell and that rings, every dog in every neighbor's house starts yelping and barking. And there was this, it sounded like Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, right? Rough, 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 rough. It was more like a complete cacophony of barking and sounds crazy and then the workers you can hear them now or i can downstairs drilling away they're going to be drilling for the next five hours gosh so all of that noise pollution has been happening here um and also we've got ambulance the sirens of ambulances going around obviously there's lots of um <clears throat> not covid cases but people being taken to hospital so there's lots of noise pollution, which is wonderful, right? Because it gives us great examples to talk about today. <laughs> great. So listen, as you're coming into the class, make yourself comfy, get your beverage of your choice. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, then let me ask you, please subscribe to the channel. Um, and of course, turn on that little notification button. So you can find out about more videos as they come up. I do the live classes every Tuesday, every Thursday, 10 o'clock Spanish time. And then normally Saturday or Sunday, I release a recorded video. Um, hey, this week, really exciting. I'm doing my first grammar video. It's all about different tenses, some tenses, um, looking at how we use them in IELTS speaking. So look out for that on the weekend. Um, and if you haven't joined us, I can see quite a few people from Facebook. There is a Facebook group called the Keith's, Keith's, what a difficult sound, right? Keith's Mastermind Community for IELTS Speaking. Come and join us. It's free. Lots of things going on there. Quite exciting. And you can also, of course, come to, look at this. It's going the other way. Ticker speak. The website, www.keithspeakingacademy. Go and check out what's happening there as well. Um, you can get, why would you go there? Because you can get the PDF of the lesson notes from the live lessons on the website. So go and check it out over there. And just as I'm beginning, um, can I just say a very, very big thank you to some people who are helping out with donations on the website to help sponsor the live lessons um, and the YouTube videos. So big thank you to Son Tui Din Xuan and to Osama who have helped out with that. Brilliant. Thank you very, very, very much. So um, I'm going to turn a few things off. 
turn that off. Otherwise, it's like you're watching CNN news, latest updates. Let me just check in with you and see how you're all doing. Prince thinks it's his birthday every day. He always writes that. Please pay no attention. Sorry, Prince, but it's true. <laughs> Let's see how you're all doing. Morning, all. We've got Jigar from India. I always wake up with experiencing alarm noise pollution. Well, yes, right? That's one of the first um, areas of noise pollution is that alarm on your um, clock or your alarm clock. Yes. <clears throat> Good. What else have we got? I wonder why it's called noise pollution, not sound pollution. Noise pollution seems to be a redundancy. Well, that's very, very interesting, right? Why is it called noise pollution, not sound pollution? I really don't know. It's it's one of those collocations that we have, noise pollution, right? Um, why would we say that? We have air pollution, water pollution. We're polluting the water. We're polluting the air. We're polluting sound. Yeah, that's a very good question. And I don't have a very good answer. Never mind. So let me just share with you, as I started up there, let me share with you... Um, over here, what I put down. I'll just take away the noise pollution. Um, I began by saying about my morning. So just to highlight this with, with for you, right? We talked about ringing the doorbells. So the workers were ringing the doorbells. Dogs barking, right? So that's quite common in um, built-up areas. Or yelping. Um, yeah, dogs bark, they yelp. Construction workers were drilling, right? And then we had this, oh yeah, the workers shouting. I forgot to mention that. The workers are always shouting. It's like, it's part of the, uh, it's part of their job to shout. They must always shout. I don't know why. Oi, Manolo, vamos a empezar. Que si, pero por que, donde está el té? Bueno, que, vamos a tomar un café, si. And they just shout all the way and it's noise pollution. It is a cacophony of sounds. What a beautiful word, right? A cacophony. And put the stress on the co, like cough. <coughs> it's the same sound, right? Cough. A cacophony of sounds is when you have different sounds that are loud and horrible, right? Imagine all these dogs barking, right? Different pitches, different sounds. That's a cacophony of sounds. Give um, give five or ten children a musical instrument and ask them to play Beethoven's Fifth. It's a cacophony of sounds, right? For sure. Be an absolute mess, <laughs> I would imagine. So those are some of the, the words we started with. Let me um, wind up as well to a noise because we talked about what is noise pollution, right? So um, a noise is a sound, especially one that is loud and disturbs. So sometimes people are asking me, if, you know, is music a noise? Well, the idea of noise is that you don't really like it. It's one that disturbs you, annoys you. You don't feel comfortable with it. So if the music is maybe loud and aggressive and you like peace and quiet, then it could be a noise. Yes. Um, for example, people playing music on their mobile phone in public spaces where the quality is horrible. It's that horrible tinny ching, chick, ching, chick, ching, chick, ching sound, right? That can be a noise, right? So I asked you all yesterday, <clears throat> I asked you what um noise do you really not like there were over a hundred replies on the facebook group about different noises um, and ones that you don't like so i'm going to share with you some really good ideas let me share with you a few of them that came up <clears throat> so first of all we had noises from people right now lots of interesting sounds here i'll just kind of go into the corner metaphorically. <clears throat> so shouting, for example, I, we, I talked about construction workers shouting. People talked about screaming. They talked about sometimes their neighbours are, are screaming and shouting to each other, well, at each other or fighting. 
um, crying. Some people talked about babies crying. Poor little baby. But really, it can be a noise. Bad singing, especially in the karaoke, you know, in the karaoke. <clears throat> Even in England, we have karaoke. <clears throat> I think all over the world. I think originally it was really popular in Asian countries, but everybody's into karaoke. There's nothing worse than bad singing, right, in a karaoke. As I mentioned, music on the loudspeaker of a mobile, right? <clears throat> on the loudspeaker. So, you know, music, if it's from a good stereo system and in a private place, great. But in public places, no. A lot of people talked about the sound people make when they eat, right? So I've picked up a few words for you here. Eating, chewing is when you're chewing something, like chewing gum. It's horrible, right? When, especially when the mouth's open. Slurping is this one. And excuse me, I don't normally do this. That slurping, horrible sound. Munching, again, is when you're munching some biscuits or something. Or chomping is more or less the same, right? So all of these sounds people make when they're eating, my oh my, they can be some of the worst, right? <clears throat> and also problems, right, especially with partners and family members, snoring, Right? Snoring, just to be clear. Snoring when you're asleep. And they say a good cure for snoring is put a tennis ball in your T-shirt on your back. So whenever you go on your back, it, you, it hurts you and it, you, you come over to your side. And when you're on your side, you tend not to snore. People tend to snore when they're Right, face up, right, like that. And if you've got a tennis ball in your T-shirt, you have to turn over. Interesting. Probably nonsense, but interesting. Grinding your teeth. I have this problem, and I don't know I do it. In the middle of the night, when I sleep, my teeth go... And they, they grind, they rub together, and they make a horrible sound. Um, and apparently, you can buy kind of a guard like a, a mouth guard, like the, the boxers have in your mouth, and it protects your teeth, apparently. So these are sounds that people may make, and this may be noise pollution from people, right? <clears throat> Let's see. Pakistani mom lifestyles in UAE. Interesting. Welcome, guys, all of you. You are very good at these acts, especially at snoring. Because <laughs> I snore. I do. Not during class, obviously, but I do snore. <laughs> uh, right, good. We've got others here. Honking vehicles. So let's move on. <laughs> Prince, stop it. <laughs> Seriously. Now then, let's move on. From people, let's move on to animals. <clears throat> from animals. Um, noises from animals. One or two were mentioned. The rooster, right, in the morning. Okay. If you want me to do an impersonation, cock a doo doo doo. Do you know that roosters speak different languages, right? It's interesting, right? When you learn a different language and you learn the sound that animal makes, right? So the, the cock or the rooster in English goes cock a doo doo doo. <laughs> yeah, cock a doo doo doo. Apparently in French they go or something like that. Um, in Spanish, what do they do? In English, cockadoodle do. So it's funny, right? Animals speak different languages. <laughs> Mosquitoes buzzing around my ear, right? Mosquitoes buzzing. Bzzz. Yeah, that was one. Somebody put up a beautiful little gif or gif showing the um, the mosquito. When it gets to your ear, oh, right. And then what do you do? You knock yourself out and <laughs> get really angry at yourself and then with the mosquito. And inevitably you try and kill it, probably. It's funny that, isn't it? 
when you see mosquitoes like in the morning in the bathroom you don't kill them you see them go oh mosquito i'm not gonna kill it it's fine it's great see a mosquito in the middle of the night whoa you straight away no mercy right because you know it can keep you awake it's funny how we react hmm so animals i don't know if any other animals any other animals barking from dogs yes good Hadi, absolutely right <laughs> Yes, this is good. I mean, the interesting thing about the rooster in Nepal is that in the past, people used to wake up by hearing the sound of the cock because in ancient time there was no alarm clock. Of course, there was no alarm clock. Of course, some people wake up by the sun just rising. <clears throat> yeah, great. So dogs barking as well. Let's add that on there as well. Dogs barking, although we had it up upstairs, <laughs> up above before. Now, from things, right? So what do we get from things? Alarm clocks. And here there's a lot, right? Um, alarm clocks wake us up, some of you mentioned. Some people ha hate thunder, storms and lightning. Car horns or people honking their horn to honk the horn. Um, there are different words, but that's probably the most common. So car horns, the ambulance siren, the siren is a, an annoying sound. Mm. There are other things, right? I think I've got drilling and low-flying aeroplanes. Of course, low-flying aeroplanes. Um, people talked about that earlier on. Right. So great. All of these things. For this, so there's lots of ideas there. You can talk about noise from people, from animals or from things things right around the city as well now then so talking about how you feel about it how do you feel about these sounds okay let me share one or two things here we might want to say i'm sensitive to certain sounds right i'm sensitive to right <clears throat> be careful make sure because you remember i am going to test you at the end of the lesson so make sure you're making a note and picking up the grammar of the words, prepositions, collocations, because I will be testing you. <laughs> I'm sensitive to certain sounds. I'm sensitive to dogs barking. I'm sensitive to thunder. Um, I'm sensitive to the sound of drilling, to the sound of drilling, right? So that's better than I really dislike. I really dislike is okay, but I'm sensitive to, it's quite nice. Or if you want to be really strong, right? I can't stand the sound of. That's really hated. You cannot possibly survive. <laughs> I can't stand the sound of this or that, right? <laughs> I can't stand the sound of dogs barking. <clears throat> Oh, I can't stand the sound of crickets making a noise at night. That's nice from Pusa. I can't stand the sound of crickets at night. <laughs> right. I can't stand the sound of building construction. That's good. Good. Now, some useful adjectives, right? This sound is annoying. Well, that's quite straightforward. It's annoying. Let's do the pronunciation here. These words all mean the same. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Annoying. So say this with me. It means irritating. You don't like it. Annoying. 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 This sound is annoying. Irritating. Irritating. Hello? Where are you? <laughs> Where are my notes? Come back. Thank you. That's a bit strange, isn't it? What happened there? That is a bit strange. Irritating. Aggravating. Notice with, again, the stress is on the first syllable. Ag aggravating the drilling is aggravating 
the mosquitoes buzzing is aggravating great maddening mad it's not actually it's written maddening but we'd say maddening maddening mad and then you you drop the dun you go say maddening it's it's maddening it's maddening mosquitoes buzzing around my ear is maddening construction work is maddening the rooster crowing is maddening that's the verb to crow the rooster crowing is maddening brilliant great so some nice adjectives you can use there all with a very similar meaning um and the same meaning the sound really grates it grates grates is like the sound you know when you put your nails on a, on a blackboard and go it's grating so any sound you, you don't like you say this sound really grates <clears throat> right you don't like it at all okay very very good lots of sounds there lots of things you can talk about i've got one more it hurts my ears and if it makes you mad we often use this expression it drives me up the wall drive the car yep yeah, drive the car up the wall why don't know but it drives me up the wall it drives me up the wall i'm going to go wide but um it drives me up the wall <clears throat> or it drives me round the bend <laughs> You can have either of those, up the wall or round the bend. But in both cases, it means it makes me angry, drives me crazy, right? Same thing, drives me crazy. All of them really trying to say exactly the same thing. <clears throat> drives me up the wall, it drives me round the bend, it gives me a headache, right? Okay, brilliant, good. <clears throat> now then, coming back to you guys, we've talked about sounds, feelings. What about describing the sound, right? How would you describe different sounds? So if you want to describe the drilling, like downstairs, uh, downstairs by the workers, how would you describe the drilling? <laughs> I really feel maddening when I do the listing test. It drives me up the wall. Oh. <clears throat> right, so some nice ideas here. Cynthia says sharp. It's a sharp sound. Nazila says a high-pitched sound. Um, oh, this is nice. A throbbing sound, especially for the drilling. Boom, 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 boom. The throb is like the blood going through your veins and through your heart. Boom, 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 you can't see, but the throbbing, boom, 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 like a heartbeat. That's nice. Um, yeah, yes, good. What else? Sound like a constant drilling is a zapping sound. It could be a zapping sound. Zapping to me sounds like when you're changing the channel on the TV, zapping grating noise that's nice right a grating noise of a drill very nice annoying excellent good it gets on my nerves let me add that that's really nice yes i forgot about that it gets on my nerves nothing to do with being nervous but it just it annoys me right it gets on my nerves lovely calm very nice roman says irritating yes loud yes whisper not really. The whisper is when it's very quiet. I think the drill is loud, right? It's the opposite. Makes me cringe. That's nice. It makes me cringe. It's like, ooh, that's a lovely one, right? Let's add that to the list. It makes me cringe. Lovely. You don't like it at all. It makes me cringe. It also is a physical reaction. So these are great, right? Deafening. That's nice. Deafening. 
brilliant because it's almost making you deaf. Of course, it's not making you deaf, but it's a deafening sound. So the drilling is a deafening sound. I go off the deep end. Nothing. I'm not sure what that is. Um, it drives me nuts. <laughs> yes, drives me nuts. Makes me. It makes me cringe. It drives me nuts. I will add that because it's nice and colloquial. It's also very, very good. Yep, an awful sound. Absolutely throbbing. We've got the same again. Great. Oh, and unbearable. Nada's got unbearable, which I had on my list as well. Great. An unbearable sound. So these are lovely words, right, we can use to describe. Let me come back. Where are we? Here. So it drives me at the ball. It drives me nuts. I've added. Great. Gets on my nerves. Gets on my nerves. Right. Make a note. Be careful with the prepositions. It's not in, under, at. No. On my nerves. Cringe. It's a lovely word. Can you say that? Cringe. Cringe. That's a really nice word. I like that. It makes me cringe. So the sound we can also say, yep, is loud, piercing, unbearable, deafening, a throbbing. If it's for a drill, you know, that's specifically for a drill. Um, but yeah, some great words there. Piercing, some nice words to describe different sounds, especially the drill sound. OK, let's have a quick look. Anything else? Deafening. Grating, sorry, let's add grating. We had that, didn't we, before? It's grating. That's nice. Crushing, maybe, a high-pitched sound. It can be, not always, but can be high-pitched. Normally, as an adjective, right, we'd have high-pitched, E-D. High-pitched would be the adjective, right? High tempo, not quite. Um, okay. Clattering. Clattering sound. So this one. Um, clattering is kind of banging. Boom, boom, boom. When you're banging the table and banging books on the table, it's a clattering sound. Possibly for a drill. Um, aggravating. Yeah, absolutely. Screeching. Ah, there's a nice one. Screeching. So screeching is especially for the drill, um, for the nails down the board, for a car going fast, or the motorbike, that kind of screeching, screeching sound, like the dentist's drill. Not only the construction worker, but the dentist has a drill, right? And when he comes to you with the drill, that screeching sound is horrific. <laughs> gives me a headache. It makes me cringe. Most people don't like that at the dentist. <laughs> I wonder what we call a fear of dentists. When you're afraid of um, spiders, it's called acrophobia. If you're afraid of, um, I don't know, there's always phobias, right? What's the fear of dentist? Dentist phobia? Dental phobia? I don't know. I'm sure there must be a word for a fear of dentists. <laughs> I'm not sure. Right. So, Aisha, welcome. Nice to see you. And to answer your question, noise pollution. That's what we're doing today, Aisha. We're talking about different noises, the, how, it, how they make us feel, um, and how we describe these kind of noises from noise pollution. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Good. So, Let's um, move on. I'm going to give you a little activity now. Why is it little? It's not little. It's just a way of speaking, right? If something's cute, it's a little activity. Um, I'm going to give you a little activity. Well, I'm going to ask you to listen to some noises, right? And these are noises that you'll probably recognize. But how... Well, first of all, tell me what the noises are. Hmm. What's the best way to do this? And avoiding thousands of comments. 
Um, Because we're going to listen to six different sounds, six different sounds. So I want you to listen and then tell me which one you cannot stand, right? Which one you hate the most and why? Okay, so I will write this down. Now, you'll have to guess. I think you'll know what all the sounds are. So here's the task, right? Wait a minute. Right, hang on. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay, let me just come back. So here's the task. The task is to move noise pollution. Thank you. So the task is to listen and then to say, which sound do you hate the most and why? Okay. You're going to listen. You're faint. No, you're going to listen to six noises. Which noise? Let's change it to noise. Which noise do you hate the most and why? Okay, so that's the task. Um, the noises are quite loud, so you may just want to adjust adjust your headphones or something. I mean, they're meant to be loud. That's the idea, right? <laughs> Nam, thank you very much. Yeah, okay, great. So let me just get the sounds ready, and then I'm going to play them to you. And I'm going to take away the question, I'm afraid, because I need to just go to the website. So remember, you're going to listen to six noises, all of them, right? And at the end, which noise do you hate the most? Okay, you can write things down if you want, but at the end, I'm going to ask you which noise do you hate the most and why? Okay, excellent. So bear with me a moment. Let's get this set up. Here we go. We've got six different sounds. Right, let's try. This is a... Can I start that one again? <laughs> Let me start that one again. Oh, love it, don't you? Love it. Come on. Right, let's start again. Number one. Number two. Okay. Uh, number three. Number four. Number five. Number six, number six.
broken everything. Absolutely broken everything. Wow. Okay. So, guys, those were the six sounds. <laughs> so the question was, right, <clears throat> uh, which noise do you hate the most and why? Give me a comment. Which noise do you hate the most and why? And I think you've got all of them actually from your comments. These are what you could hear. But which do you hate the most and why? Great. I'm going to share with you a Zynab. This is a bit big. <clears throat> Zynab says, from the plethora of sounds, I detest the sound of the telephone ring the most. And that's because it's aggravatingly repetitive. Love it. Aggravatingly repetitive. That makes me cringe every time I hear it. Very nice, Synab. Very nice. Great. Any others? <laughs> Broken glasses from my mad wife. Yeah, could be. <laughs> uh Right. Number two, phone ringing. It's really on my nerves. Right. It's re it really. Right. Not is, but it really. Gets on my nerves. Right. Nice. It's now phone ringing. It really gets on my nerves. Brilliant. Can I just make this slightly bigger? Yes, I think I can. Excellent. What else have we got? Someone's got a lot of money. <laughs> you mean because of all the broken plates? Someone's got an angry wife. Tell me about it. Or oh, angry husband. Hey, not only the, the wives. Number four. Now, the four, the screeching sound. What was number four? Let me go back. The saw. Number four was the saw, S-A-W. The saw is like, I'm not sure if you know saw. Let me just um, make it clear to you what a saw is, right? Just in case some of you don't know a saw. Right, can you see that? No. <laughs> these, these are the saws, right? So th that was the saw. It was actually a circular saw that goes round and round and round. That was number four. And so Sonam says, the screeching sound almost bleeds my ears, right? Almost bleeds my ears. Brilliant. Very, very nice. Great. What else did you not like and why? So please tell me why. Okay. Gurley says, all noises because they get on my nerves. NG, very nice. I hate the cracking sound of dishes because it is annoying and it makes me cringe. Beautiful. Very nice. Great. <laughs> Arma says the consequences after it is the noise. <laughs> True. Anything else? This is nice, right? Surabi. Phone ringing because it is high pitched and irritates me. Beautiful. Notice high pitched with a d ed high pitched and it irritates me. Nice. Interestingly, right, Natty Man says number four. That's the saw because of its high pitched sound. Beautiful. Number one actually had a sedative effect on me, so it actually relaxed you. Right. That's true for some people. The train, the chuk -chuk 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 is very sedative, relaxing, calming. That's why some people can sleep very well on the train, right? Clapper says, I can't stand now, not on. So let's be careful with the, uh, I can't stand something. I can't stand the drilling sound. It's very loud and distracting. It's very loud and distracting. Not distracted because 
I am distracted by the sound, but the sound is distracting, right? Very nice, great. This is also very nice. I'll share just one or two more with you. So this one from Zulkumo, a ringing phone drives me round the bend. Beautiful. Since it suddenly can interrupt me while I'm doing something important, like do my homework assignments. Right. That's nice. Very, very nice. Great. So. OK, pot guard. I can't stand the sound of drilling because it's very disrupting. Great. It's disrupting. Excellent. Right. I am disrupted. The sound is disrupting. Very, very nice. Lovely. Good. What's next? I'm not sure. <laughs> What's next? Um, noise pollution. Right. Noise pollution. OK, so here's, an, here's another question for you, right? A very quick question. And give me your answer down below. Is noise pollution a problem? Right. Is it a problem? I mean, can't we just put earplugs in our ears? Why is it a problem? What do you think? Is noise pollution a problem? <clears throat> yes, see, yes, yes. Is noise pollution a problem? Okay, and why? So a lot of you are saying yes, of course, absolutely good. And why? Ah, okay, great. So straight in, Simra says, yes, it affects the health of a person. It does affect our health. How does it affect our health? Okay, Amra also says, well, it would be a problem if there is a noise around, running around while I'm studying for IELTS. <laughs> yes, true. Yes, yes, it's a problem. Now, okay, Zulkamo, great. You've got this one on about why it's a problem. Absolutely, it increases stress level levels, especially in urban areas, right? Stress levels. So even you're talking about you, you have stress levels in the plural, especially in urban areas, right? So if you're talking about traffic, noise, honking of horns, um, drilling from construction, it is, it increases stress, stress levels, absolutely. Panwit makes a good point. Sorry, poor, poor, poor neat. Suddenly, a large noise can create a problem to old aged people. That's true, old age people. Um, it can create a problem. It may surprise them. It might cause them to lose their balance and fall over. It could give them a heart attack, right? All sorts of things. Good. So to kind of recap that, Nikita puts it very, very nicely. She says noise pollution around hospitals or around elderly or babies can be aggravating to their health. I love that. Not only aggravating, but aggravating to their health. Very common collocation. Very nice, Nikita. Lovely. Great. Anything else? Right. Yes. Okay. This is another one. It's a problem because it can affect on my sleeping hour. Um, let me just change that a bit. So affects something, right? Not on. Um, and it affects my sleeping hours. It, it can affect my sleeping hours. It can affect my sleep, I think, maybe. Yeah, sleeping hours is fine, but I think we would say also it can affect my sleep. Um, yes, it can lead to sleep loss, right? Absolutely, that's another problem. So some brilliant ideas. Let me share with you some of the ones I wrote down. Okay, and then I'm going to move on in a moment. So yes, it can cause stress, right? Somebody said um, it can affect our stress levels, 
in the plural is nice. Um, it can lead to sleep loss, right? It can lead to insomnia. Insomnia is the inability to sleep. So if you can't sleep for days and days and days and days, then you have insomnia. It can also lead to hearing damage, right? Um, can damage your ears. It can aggravate the health of elderly people or sick, elderly or sick people, right, in particular. So all of these, right, they, they, it's a problem, right? It can cause all of these stress, um, sleep loss, insomnia. All of these are big, big problems for, for noise. It can disrupt my work. Yeah, good. This is House Flower Show with Danny D. What <laughs> House Flower Show? I'm really curious now. What on earth is the House Flower Show with Danny D? I'd love to see that show. But yes, it disrupts my work. Remember, work is not countable, right? You can't count work. You can count jobs and you can count a piece of work, but not work. So it disrupts my work, right? That's nice, House Flava Show with Danny D. <laughs> right? So, yeah, it disrupts, let's put it then, it disrupts um, our work. Brilliant, some nice answers. So I'm going to move on to one more question, right? Um, and the next one is this one. Is there more noise pollution now compared to the past? Good question, right? Is there more noise pollution now compared to the past? Hmm, I wonder. What do you think? Let me know. <laughs> Some very good answers there. Let me bring this up. Let me add a few answers here. We've got, is there more noise pollution now? Yes, due to the increased vehicles and industries. Good. Nowadays, cars exhaust. Ah, you're trying to, okay, good, very good. You're trying to do the, um, the S like Keith's community, right? Cars exhaust. With things, we don't normally do that. We just have, nowadays, car exhausts are loud, right? We talk about the car door, not the car's door, the car door, the car wheel. Um, so the car exhaust, but speaking generally, of course, about all of them, car exhausts are loud, right? Yeah, good, good point. <laughs> Pritika, very nice comment. Yes. Um, okay. We've got one here, Pranav. Absolutely increased vehicles and industries lead to, moise, to more noise emissions. Okay. Right. Arguably, it depends. So that's interesting. Maybe yes. I'm in two minds about this. Arguably, yes. But on the other hand, no. Supra says, certainly overpopulation leads to noise pollution. Yep, great. Now, here's an interesting point from Sarita. Due to the, the pandemic, noise pollution is less than earlier. Okay, so pandemic, you need the. Let's add that. Due to the pandemic, because you're talking about a specific pandemic, right? Noise pollution is less good. That's good because noise pollution, right, is non-countable. Pollution you cannot count. So it's less pollution. Earlier, though, is like, you know, earlier in the class, earlier in the day. I think what you mean here is before. Due to the pandemic, noise pollution is less than before, right? 
there is less noise pollution than before, right? Good. Now that's good because you're picking up on this word, right? Compared. That's a key word here. Is there more noise pollution now? Compared. So if you can bring out the language of comparison in your answer, you're showing off your control of the grammar, right? Is less than is good because you're using comparing language. There's a clue in the question, right? Remember the examiner always has a reason for the question, usually. I think they're looking for something, for testing your ability to speak, but sometimes they're testing, can you make comparisons? Can you talk in the past, right? Again, there's a clue here. So you want to be be aware of these clues to the kind of grammar you may want to use. You don't have to, but you may want to, right? Now, okay, nowadays, noise pollution increased than before. Now, you can't say increased than before. You would hear, be much better to say, nowadays, noise pollution um, has increased, has increased, or noise pollution is higher. Nowadays, noise pollution is higher than before. Higher? Noise pollution is higher than before. It could be higher because noise pollution, there are levels, right? There are decibels. There's actually an official scale, the number of decibels that is acceptable for the noise or the sound. So you can talk about higher. Noise pollution is higher than before. Richard makes a good point. Now, a lot of construction. There is more construction. Um, the says because of the technology development. Yes, and I think, let's elaborate. Tell me more. Uh, Ishimat talks about technology as a nice expression, Ishmit. The kind of technology that has set in, right, that has appeared. Very nice expression. Yes. And I guess Gopinath picks it up, right? You're putting it all together. Certainly due to industrialization. So if you're talking about technology, industrialization is much clearer about why there's more uh, noise pollution, right? Construction, um, tra transportation of goods, the train, the 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 ship, the the buses, um, construction, building buildings, all of that industrialization, the factories, the noise you get from factories, absolutely, great, very good. I was just going to add here, right? Um, is there more noise pollution now compared to the past? Um, yeah, this is just an idea. You don't have to do this, but you might want to begin with your opinion, um, saying yes or no, right? I would say, let's take Lorraine's. Arguably, arguably, <laughs> oh, come on. Arguably, yes. So you may want to start with your opinion, say yes or no. I would say arguably less. In the past, and then talk about the past. Right? But now, but nowadays, and then talk about nowadays and use the comparison. There is more noise pollution because da 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 da. Uh, there are higher levels of noise because okay so i'm trying to use some kind of comparison language here as well um, when i talk about the past i'll use the past tense uh, and of course today i'll use the present tense there is there are higher levels right so you could say something like i would say arguably yes um in the past, there wasn't so much construction, but nowadays there is more noise pollution because there's been a huge increase in the construction of factories and houses for people to live in. And this um, grating drilling that goes on contributes to the high levels of noise pollution. Something like that. So this might give you a bit of a structure, right? Yes or no. 
talk about the past, talk about nowadays, and just make some comparisons there. And of course, always explain your answer. You need to go into depth, into detail, right? This is a part three kind of question, probably, that you might get. Okay, great. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Excellent, good. So, guys, I'm going to come to model answers um, in the the next bit. Um, so each lesson, I'd like to take on some model answers. Um, and I think model answers can be useful, not for you to memorize, but for you to become aware of the kind of language we use in model answers. Now, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes explaining something that might help you. With model answers and with you practicing, right? I'm sure at home or with your speaking partner, you have some kind of typical questions and you're asking and practicing your answer, right? Now then, one of the key mistakes students make is they look at the question. They then try and write out a really beautiful answer. And then they practice speaking and reading the answer. And what happens? Well, what happens is... <laughs> what happens is you end up sounding like a book. You don't sound natural, spoken English, because books have beautiful answers, perfect sentences, structure, full stops, commas, right? But that is not how we speak. So much better for you is not to write your perfect answer, to look at the question and start speaking. Speak. Ah, da, da, I think that possibly this and that with the hesitation, with the uncertainty, with the change, with the wrong word. It's fine. Start speaking. If you want to speak, record, listen and write it out. Yes, but start with speaking. And let me kind of show this a bit more, right? So I want you to notice speech is not in perfect sentences. Never, ever. And in your IELTS speaking, it's not going to be perfect sentences, right? It just won't be. Come over here. In speech, there is repetition. We repeat the words, right? I know it's good to use synonyms. That's good. But repeating words is fine. It's natural. There are false starts. False starts is where you begin to say something and then you change your mind and think, oh, no, I'll say it a different way. That's fine. That's natural English. I'm going to show you a quick example. If you write your answers out in perfect sentences, um, it will not sound natural. It will sound like you are a book. So don't write your answers out first. Speak your answer first. Then if you want, record it and then write it out if you want. Speak first is the key thing. Okay. Let me show you an example of this, right? If, oh, well, let's see, things have moved a bit, but I think I can still move this down. Can I move this down? Things have moved a lot. Why have things moved so much? Okay. Oh, it's a quite small, but I might be able to do it. This is a bit small, but... So last week, if you... Sorry, on Tuesday, if you downloaded the PDF about nation and cultures, there was a model answer. Um, the question was, why do we have to preserve cultures, right? Now, look over here. This is spoken. Let's hope this doesn't... Oh, no, no. It changes everything. So this is spoken. Oh, come on. And over here is written. So basically, um, on the left is what I said. On the right is what I might write out if I was writing first. So I said, for example, 
I think there are several aspects of our culture that are well worth preserving, da 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 da, and traditional aspects, right? I repeat, celebrations, right? I think, you know, customs around birthday celebrations, wedding celebrations, Christmas celebrations, lots of repetition. That is natural English. If I was going to write it out, I might think, ooh, aspects. Think of a synonym, features. Ooh, celebrations. I can't repeat it. I need to make it perfect. No, you don't need to make it perfect. You can have the repetition. That's natural English. At the bottom, I did a false start, right? It's inevitable for me. Uh, uh, I think culture is fluid and forever changing. If I was writing that, I would take out the false start. It's inevitable for me. And I would just say, I think change culture is fluid and forever changing. But the false start is fine. It's spoken English. You can say something, change your mind, say something different. Okay. So the message is you do not have to speak perfect sentences. You should be speaking spoken English. So when you're practicing, begin with the speaking. Do not begin writing your answer. Okay. Does that make sense? I hope so. So, okay. Brilliant. Good. I think that makes sense. Um, so model answers. So guys, questions. Um, model answers. I'm going to do a model answer. Write down a question about noise pollution that you would like me to answer. Ah, good. That was an eye opener. Good. Great advice. Good. It makes sense. Good. Good. So you seem to be, yes, I think it makes sense to you. Okay. Excellent. So guys, questions. Ah. Oh, this is a great question. Imana. Hmm. Okay. Can the problem of noise pollution be solved? If yes, how? <clears throat> what a good question. I always have a drink, don't I? <laughs> to think. Um, it's a really good question. And I think, frankly speaking, we can never completely get rid of noise pollution. <clears throat> I think Due to the development of technology and industrialization, there's a growing amount of construction happening around us. Um, so there's always going to be a certain level of noise pollution coming from the drilling, the building, the shouting of the workers. Even though we put in measures to reduce the amount of noise pollution, so for example, there may be rules and regulations about the time of day you can drill, or what kind of machinery you use to drill, inevitably there always will be noise pollution. Um, so I think it's a real challenge to solve this problem. Hmm. Right. Great. Good. That's question number one. Let's find another question. I'm going over time a little bit, but if you know me, you know I always go a little bit over time. Just five more minutes or so. Your hairstyle is awesome. <laughs> Sorry, this is so funny. Your hairstyle. <laughs> Seriously? Great, thank you. I don't think I have a hairstyle. Okay, here's a nice one. This is almost like a short and simple question. If there were a part one question, then this probably would probably be it. <laughs> Which noise you don't like and why? Which noise don't you like? Come on, Diksha, if we're going to make a question, let's do it properly. Which noise don't you like? I know you're rushing. I know you're typing quickly. <clears throat> okay. 
Oh, well, there are so many noises that I find aggravating. But one of the most maddening noises there is for me um, is the sound of the dentist drill. It's one of those noises that is so high pitched and piercing that it, it really grates, right? And it, it drives me around the bend. Not only that, not only does it drive me around the bend, it really scares me. It's a sound that I, I think maybe the dentist wants to attack me and kill me. Um, so it's one of those noises that I really hate. Yeah. <laughs> okay, nice. Let me find one more question. <clears throat> right, we've talked a bit about stopping noise pollution and reducing it. Um, though you're all asking the same question. Ah, okay. Here's one about causes rather than solutions from Pranav. What are the primary causes of noise pollution in in the cities? Now, be careful because when you say the cities, that means you're referring to specific cities. But I guess you're not talking about the cities in your country or specific cities. You're speaking generally, right? I do that when I say generally, <laughs> generally. So let's take out the and let's just say in cities. What are the primary causes of noise pollution in cities? Good. <clears throat> I think nowadays there's a number of causes of noise pollution, but probably one of the most significant ones um, is traffic. As cities grow and there's an influx of people coming from the countryside to the city, they bring their cars with them. Private car ownership is growing. Everybody wants their own car. And so there's more traffic on the streets. And that comes with the noise of the engine from the exhausts, people honking their horns um, because there's more traffic jams. People get exasperated. And so you get this buildup of noise pollution from traffic. I think that's one of the primary causes. Um, but also as cities grow, there's more and more construction, right? So you have the noise from the construction site, be it from machinery, be it from workers shouting, be it from uh, drills that are being used and making this aggravating and piercing sounds that you hear throughout the day. So yeah, I would say those two, traffic and construction, are two of the primary causes of noise pollution in cities. Hmm. Right. Good. So good range of questions, actually. You, you've talked about personal feelings, about you've asked me about reducing it and what causes it, which is great. Excellent. Nice questions. Lovely. So, guys, um, oh, I almost forgot. We've got time. We've got five minutes to finish up with a quick kahoot. It's always nice at the end to have a bit of fun and review the vocabulary. As I said, I'm always testing you. So I know the videos can be enjoyable, but I really, really, really encourage you to take notes, to spot collocations, to spot prepositions, to spot the kind of synonyms that we're using. Um, and really be on your toes, right? Be on the ball to really improve the level of your your language. Um, and so the vocabulary review with Kahoot at the end is a way to do that because I encourage you to really make a note as we're going through. And then you can cheat in Kahoot. <laughs> you can look at your notes and check the right answer. Why not, right? Yes. Okay, brilliant. So... Let us get into the Kahoot. Give me um, a tick. If you need to leave, I totally understand. I do realize I've gone on longer than an hour. Um, but if you can stay, then that would be fantastic. And join us in this Kahoot. If you're new today, then Kahoot, just to explain, is a, it's a bit of a fun game that we play. There are four questions and it's a test of all the vocabulary that we've looked at today, okay? So I'm just gonna share the screen with you. 
let me come over here. Not this one, but current application, Google Chrome. There we go. We're going into teach mode. We're going to play the classic. Right, so what you need to do, if you don't know already, is to go to www.kahoot.it. And um, press the game pin 37007261. You need to put in your name and then you'll get in there. People are going in already. Fantastic. Whoops. Bear with me a moment. Right, okay, 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 we've got 150 people in. That's quite a lot. If you can't get in, you can just use the comments section to write down your answer to the question. Okay, let's get in. Let's get going. Let's get cooking. Great expression. Let's get cooking means, you know, let's start the game. Noise. Which of these sounds is not made by a person? Which of these sounds is not made by a person? You've got 22 seconds. Wow, well done. Look at that. Let me come back in the screen. Um, 122 of you got right. Crowing is not made by a person, right? Crowing is not made. It's made by an animal. The crowing of the, the rooster or the cock will crow in the morning. Cock a doodle doo. Cockory cocko. The others are made by people snoring. Remember when we sleep, slurping when we drink, and screaming wah, when you're angry with your partner, for example. Well done. Nice. Very pleased about that. What's next? Oh, you're Miko. You're a star. You're always in first place. You were there last time as well. Hamdi. Nice. Up in second. And ASNM. ASNM in third place. Ryan and Manners coming up close. Let's move on to the next question. At night, some people mm, their teeth. At night, some people mm, their teeth. Bite, grind, snore, or chew. Wow, fantastic. 147 of you got it absolutely right. It was grind your teeth when you rub them together when you don't know about it. Excellent. Well done. Let's see the positioning then. Oh, you, Miko is holding top. Camel is coming second. Ryan's moved up to third. Manus and Asnam have changed place. So remember, this is the people who get it right the fastest. Okay, question number three. Which is the odd one out? That means which one is different? So which one has a different meaning? 
20 seconds to go. Five seconds. Fantastic. Oh, you guys are doing really well today. 153 of you got it right, right? Soothing is positive. It's nice. It's calming, relaxing, brilliant. The other three are the same. Annoying, maddening, aggravating. Remember, irritating, all of them. Great. Those three are the same. Well done. Oh, I am impressed. Very happy today. Good. Where are we on the leaderboard? Yumiko's still holding her own. Asnam has come up second. Kamal has moved into third place. And Johann Sebastian Bach has suddenly come back into fifth place. <laughs> right. Next question. The last one. Someone who can't sleep night after night is suffering from... Choose two answers. Here, choose two answers. Two of them are correct. Hey, why are your comments disappearing? That's interesting. What's happened there? Great music. Remember to choose two. Two of them are correct. 20 seconds left. Five seconds. And I think you've all given your answer. Right. Excellent. You got it. So it's insomnia and sleep loss are the correct answers. Well done, guys. Nice. Good. Let's find out. The moment of truth has Yumiko kept her place at the top. Here we go. Third place. Bach. Gopinath came into second and first. <laughs> well done at last Yumiko you made it to the top of the box well done you right in there excellent very very well done that's brilliant good so listen well done all of you you did a really good job on um, learning the new words and getting some good results there excellent so listen as I finish up for today, I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you, obviously, for joining me. What an interesting topic, right? I hope it can be useful for you. Um, a reminder again, if you're on YouTube, do subscribe again. Just turn on the notification button um, so you can find out about new videos coming up. Um, if you want to join us on the Facebook group, just look for Keith's Mastermind Community and you'll find us there. Um, come and visit the website. So at the end of the class today, probably later this evening, I need about four or five hours, um, come to www.keithspeakingacademy.com. You'll find the lesson notes in the live lessons area and you can go and download them there. Um, let me just show you actually, if you go to the website, just to make sure if you're new, to make sure you know where to go, right? So you can go to the Top where it says free live lessons up there at the top. Whoops. Pop-ups. Don't you love them? So go to the free live lessons. And that's where you can get all of the, the stuff. Download the notes. If you want to leave a donation, that's always a big, big help for the live lessons. Um, and here you can just download. You can watch them again. We had nation and culture. And when you download, you can have a close look at the model answers. Look at the language I'm using and how I'm speaking in the model answers. Okay. Fantastic. Guys, that's it. Very, very, that's it. That's the end. Um, 
just a reminder as well, I almost forgot. Some of you can't point properly. I can't point. It's switched around. The online course on Udemy, if you're interested, um, it looks at part one, part two, part three. Um, it's a great way to have a systematic way of studying for IELTS speaking. Um, the link is all over the place. It's on the website. It's in the Facebook. It's here in YouTube. Um, you can find it and go and have a look. Great. So listen, thank you very, very much for joining me. Um, you all seem to have disappeared from the comments and I'm not sure why, but never mind. I hope you're still there. I hope you're well um, and have a fantastic weekend coming ahead. I look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.